to our international cosplay panel. We're very happy to have a lot of different cosplayers here from different uh, national backgrounds. <laughs> we completely didn't see that. Okay, um, let's just uh, go by the speaker shortly. So um, it would be nice if everyone introduces herself near the slide, I think. Shinju is up first. That's you. Hi, I'm Shinju. I'm from Romania. Uh, I'm from Romania. Um, I've been cosplaying since 2007, and I grew more and more fond of this hobby. And well, uh, I like international cosplay scene. I like meeting cosplayers from all over Europe. And last year, I participated in Europe Cosplay. I represented Romania. Nice to meet you. Pass it around, I, I think, and I hope that uh, now when Lily is missing currently, <laughs> she's, uh, coming. She's, she's coming. She's coming later. She's coming later. Four minutes. I four heard. minutes. We'll be seeing her. We'll be introducing her in a minute. Um. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Hi. Um. I'm. Um. Uh, that. That's my Facebook name. But uh, actually, my name is Elif. Yeah. I'm from Turkey. Uh, I've been cosplaying on and off since uh, 2006, but um, I started really cosplaying in earnest in 2010. And um, I, uh, I also uh, participated in your cosplay 2020, last year. And uh, this costume you see over there. And <laughs> uh, yes, that's, that's sort of all I have to say about me for now. Yeah, this is me. I'm Katzara from Germany. I'm doing cosplay since 2004, and I have been the representative for the World Cosplay Summit in 2009 and 2011. And uh, I was the winner of the European Cosplay Gathering solo last year. And yeah, I've been doing this hobby since a long time, and basically I travel around a lot. And I've visited already 12 countries on three continents. <laughs> Let's go back to Wendy for a minute. <laughs> You're here, we're so happy. We yeah. were worried. I was on the toilet. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Cosplayers. <laughs> well, hi. Um, my cosplay name is Autenshi. I am a Dutch cosplayer for about four years. I really enjoy going to conventions and meet uh, new people and also socialize with my friends. I think that's the main reason why I like cosplaying and also because I like uh, to be cre creative. Before I uh, discovered cosplaying, I was also drawing a lot and uh, making brochures with clay and such silly, silly things, so yeah. So <laughs> I now can uh, or put all my creativity in cosplay. Okay, um, we'll pass the mic again. <laughs> oh. Yes, delicately. Okay. Yeah, this works out fine. Do we even need this for the room? Well, we'll, we'll use it anyway. Um, so hi, I'm Nicole, I'll be moderating this panel. I'm currently uh, employed at Maastricht University where I'm finishing my book. I'm in my last month of finishing it and becoming a doctor in uh, media studies and particularly I'm investigating fan cultures. So I write about cosplay a lot. I love the hobby. I'm also a co casual cosplayer myself. I enjoy it um, and I love studying it as a type of crafting but also as a type of play that we can look at from a more social identity uh, perspective. Um, so yeah, um, I find cosplay a very rich hobby and I'm super happy that uh, we could be able to have this panel here, this international discussion here at AnimeCon. Um, so happy to see all of you here. Uh, the idea is to have a really nice engaging discussion about cosplay so you'll be able to post questions whenever you want. Um, we also have a set of ourselves. Um, Let's see, the topics that we will be discussing uh, is the internationality of the, in of the scene and the locality of its fan cultures, because obviously we have a very diverse team here. We'll be discussing some, uh, some gender and embodiment issues and uh, the type of craftsmanship and labor involved. So three domains that we'll address. And every time I give you the opportunity to ask questions and at the end a Q&A if you have any specific questions about whatever. <laughs> You can also ask about competitions, obviously they have a lot of expertise in that, or uh, you know, whatever you want. So um, I'd like to discuss uh, maybe first the, the local uh, dimensions of our anime scene. Um, 
So I'm just going to probe you a little bit about uh, your local traditions, and I'm, I think I'm going to start probably with um, Ava. <laughs> okay. It's, I find Ava so much easier yeah, that's to pronounce. Ava. Like, people have been calling me that since 2002. No oh, I see. <laughs> Um, so yeah, hi. Um, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Turkey is sort of right between Europe and Asia, and it's sort of right between first world and the third. So um, it's in, lo in a lot of terms, it's in between a lot of things, cultures, um, I don't know, economics and education. Traditionally, Turkey is not a very like hobbyist country. We are not so big on hobbies because we always assume we don't have enough money to s extra money to spend on them, and we. I actively discourage our children to pursue hobbies because our school system is quite brutal and badly organized. Uh, but despite that, a few years ago, cosplay in Turkey started blooming incredibly. Um, like in about 2006-2007, MTV Turkey started showing um, some anime series and a, a new generation of kids, like uh, kids who were back then 12, 13, 15, started uh, watching them. So. Uh, that, that created a new generation which grew up, grew up with anime and in about 2011 yes uh, suddenly cosplay boomed before that we could only wear our costumes in like costume parties in the uh, like parties after parties of role-playing conventions conventions Turkey is a Turkey is very big on uh, pen and paper role-playing games and um, like in 2011, some guy, some underage guy, made a party for his underage friends in a in a cafe uh, at daytime, which was unheard of before. But it, it got on so quickly and became so popular. So um, in a few years, it became from like uh, wearing crappy co costumes in dark, uh, smoky bars to nice little cosplay parties with a lot of age groups to uh, a huge convention with um, almost a thousand. Uh, attendees, which is a quite big number for Turkey for such things, because I know. And um, right now we have three conventions in Turkey, which is Torukon. Uh, first one is Torukon. Uh, it's the first cosplay and um, Japanese culture subculture convention in Turkey. And the other one is Contact. Uh, it's organized by Turkish subculture community, and it's again uh, it, it includes role playing, um, like comics, uh, video games, cosplay, other hobbies, other crafts, other subcultures. And the third one is uh, actually Kalsara will be a guest. Um, it's called Spellfair. It will be held first time in the first time this year. And I don't know what to expect. <laughs> like it will be nice, probably. And um, make it nice. Yes, <laughs> so we shall make it nice with our costumes. <laughs> and yeah, that's basically how cosplay in Turkey started. The uh, the specialties of the scene in Turkey is it's very young, uh, and it's very excitable. It's very excited. It's very I don't know, it's very passionate about the hobby. Most people are uh, younger than 18 and um, they don't have the means to make very large gorgeous costumes so they try to make do they try to make do like with what they have like they try to recycle their clothes they you know beg their moms to buy them fabric teach them how to sew teach them how to craft like um, people who are trying to you know like help their friends like they craft stuff for people for just for the cost of the material and stuff and we are like we are very much in the infancy stages of our cosplaying. We don't have any like large, huge costumes in the sense the European countries and Japan does. Um, we do have some problems with our scene in Turkey, uh, which are like people when they do a costume that is big and intricate for them, and they when they attend the costume uh, attend the competition with that costume, they expect to win, and they become cross when they don't win, mm -hmm. and like there's a. There's sort of a huge amount of gossip and like, I don't know, like everybody's talking about everybody thingy, but I don't think that's popular to Turkey. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's pretty much uh, the gist of it. So would you like me to talk more or can I receive also questions? Um, well, there's there's a lot of people in the yeah. panel, so I'm just, I'm just, well, who wants to go first? Maybe you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, the cosplay scene in Germany is really, really big. We have really many people. And it's our, it already started like pretty early in 2002 or so when people started to make costumes. And when I entered in 2004, it was already kind of big. And people experimented with all kinds of costumes, like with huge gowns and with armors. And of course, more and more with the time, people became more professional in using stuff. 
they put on really professional makeup, really nice wigs and so and now our scene is really gorgeous and really big. We have really young people, also the kind of old people. I cannot say that there's like oh, the ordinary cosplayer is 18 years old because we have like all ages and all ages interact with each other. This is pretty cool. And um, also the, the typical German cosplayer is more doing like not so big costumes, like more normal size, but they are really accurate in the seams, really accurate in the details. Also, we have um, like a, our own championship, which looks exactly on details. Are you looking at the character from the head to the toe of all kinds uh, of directions? And um, yeah, this is basically about what we like to do. Also, German co uh, cosplayers are not that competitive. We have some people who have participated always in competitions, but I think maybe 95% of our cosplayers never participated in any competition. We just do this copy for fun, to copy with their friends and to take beautiful photos. It's like a really big part in German cosplay that um, everybody takes photos with their friends. We have some photographers, but usually we have um, cosplayers who take photos with their cameras of their cosplay friends. So it's like a very social scene where you meet up and enjoy your costumes and it's not this uh, competitive on, oh, I have to go on the stage, I have to win this award. We don't have this this much, that's kind of cool. Also, what I really like on, on German uh, Germans is that uh, when you are really short on money and you have problems, you always can ask a friend, hey, can you lend me your wig? They're like, sure, here's my wig. Or can you lend me a pair of boots? Or oh, I have really no money, maybe can I wear your costume for one day? And it's okay. So we are really open with these social people. Of course, there's like a bit of bitching, but I think it's not that much in Germany. You have really nice people <laughs> and really open. And yeah. Go and to Germany. Yeah. <laughs> In general, that's what I what I have a feeling about my country. That they are really um, really social to each other and really friendly. And yeah, and we are also really open to foreign cosplayers. We're always happy when someone comes from another country. Yeah, and basically that's yeah. I look at my Germans like did they say something right? <laughs> there they yeah. are, the Germans. Did they forget something? No. Okay. That's just yeah. really great. Okay, about the Romanian cosplay scene, um, it's young too, not as young as the one in, in Turkey. It started in 2007, actually I was the first cosplayer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was me and uh, some sort of casual cosplay at the first convention we had and since then it's been growing and growing. Uh, at first in numbers, like many cosplayers many people in competition and then it decreased a bit and I think now it's the quality is growing. Um, I can't really define the type of costumes uh, Romanian cosplayers make like you did for Germany. I think they're like trying everything else because everything is new to us so everybody's trying something to see what fits their preferences more, what they can do best. And I have to say I'm really, really proud of the Romanian cosplay scene now because I have big hopes for it. And since the community is pretty tight, there's not much drama. So that, that makes me proud. <laughs> um, I think we still have to cover Holland a little bit. <laughs> or maybe some comparisons. Well, about the Dutch cosplay scene and the community, I think it's a rather small community, but a very friendly uh, community, so everybody knows each other, uh, likes to help each other, and you're also always very curious to see what the other cosplayers made. So it's a big uh, get-together with everyone on the convention, so you have a lot of fun together. Uh, I also see uh, enormous, uh, um, more uh, very talented people, I think, um, a few years ago. Uh, people didn't, uh, yeah, there weren't really competitions, so it was for most of the part the social aspect of the conventions that was very important for the people who came. But now you see people really want to try to make something very beautiful and very uh, intricate and uh, amazing. Also because of uh, yeah, the new materials that are available, like Warbler and Wonderflex, it's uh, getting more and more easy to make something nice. And uh, yeah, I think the cosplay community in the Netherlands is uh, really growing. Uh, with a lot of uh, good cosplayers. And I have no idea how old the uh, cosplay community in the uh, Netherlands is. I think it's, it, begins, uh, it, it began in 2000, around 2000. 
probably yeah. I remember at my first convention there were already quite some cosplayers and that was in 2003 or 4 so it's it's growing it's it's really uh, yeah it's a really uh, growing way to see so anything else you would like to Mm, no, maybe no. maybe there's someone that has questions at this point. Well, then maybe it's a good idea to ask about your competition experiences a little bit. Uh, what was it like to meet up with people from other countries? Yeah, I uh, really enjoyed uh, participating in, uh, in international competitions. Uh, also because you know people from Facebook, it sounds really ridiculous, but you, you follow the progress pictures of people and then you see the costume in real life afterwards at a convention. And I think, I think that's really wonderful. And also to meet those persons you really look up to uh, in person, it's also very uh, nice. Uh, the competition aspect uh, on its own, uh, it's really busy. So I like to relax a bit on a convention and take it easy. But when you're competing in an international competition, you have a very tight schedule, and I have a bit of a problem with that because I like to take it easy. And uh, but it, it is worth it. So if you're thinking about uh, competing, I uh, should really uh, do that if I were you, because it's a very great way to uh, meet awesome uh, other people who have the same passion and uh, and hobby as you have. So. That's good. Um, does anyone have some? I basically really like to do international competitions because the stages you have in the finals are amazing. Especially in Paris, I love the stage, they have amazing light and the sound is just gorgeous there. And uh, I'm a really creative person and sometimes I have just uh, images of performances in my head like, oh, you could do this, <gasps> you could do that. Oh, then, then suddenly I have a performance and I think, like, okay, I need a stage for this performance. What shall I do? <laughs> and then usually these stages from the international competitions are like the most awesome stages because in Germany we don't have really um, normal competitions anymore. It, we just have this international stuff and the German cosplay championship. All the normal comp cosplay competitions are just like comedy stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not like serious drama performances or anything like this. So if you want to go on a big stage, you have to go for the international performances. And that's why I keep doing it because there are still ideas in my heart and I want to make them uh, as a stage performance. Uh, one of the, the great reasons to participate in international competitions is actually, um, as uh, she said, it's nice to meet lots of people and you get to learn so much because, uh, well, it, it's nice watching work in progress on people's pages, DeviantArt, etc., blogs. But it just happens that you see someone wearing something in, on, on their cosplay and say, oh, what is this made of? Oh, I made it out of this. Oh, really? Oh, I should use this too because I want to make something else. So you learn so many techniques and learn of materials. And I think it just helps grow the community and the overall quality of cosplay in Europe because well you know we're not United States we're not a big country we don't speak the same language the only way to meet each other is through international competitions and I think this is actually helping cosplay grow in Europe it's a, it's a really good point that it helps uh, helps the scene advance um, is there anyone here who would like to engage in a European competition? <laughs> don't be shy, don't be shy. Oh, okay. Oh, that's okay. Is there anything you specifically wonder about you would like to ask, maybe? Do you maybe have tips? <laughs> like one thing that they should bear in mind? Start early. Yeah. Start early. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, also, don't go there like thinking, oh, I'm going to win, I'm going to win. Yeah, it's normal that you want to win. But go there to have fun and meet new people and just simply have an amazing time participating in the competition. It's not the end of the world if you don't win. <laughs> also, uh, many do like a pair competition. Be really good friends with your partner because it is stressful and you will start to bitch at each other <laughs> and when, you're, when your friendship is not really close you will just lose your friend because under this pressure it's just like everybody will react like a bit bitchy maybe <laughs> yeah the drama <laughs> no, um, okay sounds great um, 
well, we're, we're, we have to be a little bit on time, so I'm just gonna skip ahead to the next topic. We've been pre-discussing gender a little bit, uh, like what is acceptable in cosplay. It's been in the, well, the geek news a lot lately with the debates on uh, fraud cosplayers, um, authors hating cosplayers. Uh, so there's, there's been a lot of uh, negativity in the scene lately. Not, not among cosplayers, but particularly on those that look at it and think, what, what are these women doing? Um, I think... Um, I'm just gonna ask you uh, what you think about these kind of debates, and I think I've noted down that Ava had something to say about it, so I'm just gonna. I, yeah, I actually have a boatload to say about this because yes. yeah, yeah it, when it. when the topic gets a bit feministic, um, I get I am. Oh well. Uh, first of all, like I'd like to start with the problem that uh, the uh, cosplay is still seen as a female hobby. Mm -hmm. And therefore it is derided, like it's been seen as something unimportant and trivial because stuff females do like handcraft, sewing, uh, they're like not important, they're frivolous, they're ridiculous things. So yeah, I, I think that's like a, still a major problem with cosplay itself. Also, um, I'd like to talk about the object objectification of the female form mm -hmm. in the cosplay and the, from the, in the mediums uh, it derives from. Like, for example, can you see my costume? It has a lot of poops, doesn't it? <laughs> it's from a game called League of Legends, and uh, we have like half of our characters are female, and almost all of them have to have their boobs hanging out. <laughs> I have like four pillows in my uh, thingy to make my make everything look like hers. So yeah, I but but still you go and do these costumes because they look cool. But um, then you show a lot of skin and make a like make a spectacle of yourself sometimes, and that's I uh, I honestly I think that's a bit objectifying. And also, there's another thing that, uh, th there's another trend that goes in the geek circles that girls like cosplaying because they want attention. Mm -hmm. And they don't know anything about the fandoms they cosplay from. So, um, and uh, actually there's a great uh, Dork Tower comic about this, like, uh, there's this guy who's like, watching the movies, like, reading the comics, playing the games, not giving a second thought about them after they finish, after he finishes them. Mm -hmm. And there's another girl, like, she reads a comic, she likes a character, she, um, searches the character's background, she uh, looks at the character from all angles to, to all angles to be able to you know do her costume or his costume, uh, and then like she does a lot, lot of research, like puts in a lot of hours to just to be able to craft the costume with all these details correctly, and then she gets accused of you know knowing nothing about the fandom and being an attention whore, sorry, so to speak. So um, I think that's a really big problem with cosplay right now, at, in terms of gender. Anyway, it's true. Um. And is there maybe a way that we could ask cosplayers to do something about it? Because um, obvi obviously, like you say, we're well, we're engaging with objectifying media representations, but at the same time, it's also liberating. It can be fun. It uh, is. You're also, you yeah, know, it is. doing like, it yourself. I mean, so. it's both uh, it's both good and bad. Like uh, seeing yourself in a cool, in a in an in an appealing way is like boosts your self esteem. But on the other hand. Uh, you doubt uh, if you are just a pair of nice boobies to someone else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it, it depends on how you act when you wear a costume. When you wear like a really sexy costume, like with leather showing boobs, you have to be more classy and more elegant. And when someone comes and makes like funny jokes and yeah, 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 you, and then yeah. you're like yeah, 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 then you look like a bit <laughs> as social and like a bit uh, like a slut. But when you are more like. Uh, Worked like in a normal way, like and I said, yeah, cool. And then I like more as a classy person. The less, the more skin you show, the more classy you have to be. And when you are like, a, like in a kind of like in a school uniform or in a big, a big, like sack like costume, I really like to remember. You can be like a really a bit retarded and funny, and people still um, react normally on you because you you are totally covered. But like the more skin you show, the more classy you have to be and the more you have to look how you stand and how you appear to others and when there are some strangers coming uh, from a con who don't know who you are and they're looking at you like this and you can be like yeah um, I'm a model and I'm crafting costumes I'm a costume maker and then it sounds like better as you say guy it's my hobby I'm just some, some freak and doing some costumes <laughs> yeah it depends on how you you react on people and how you show yourself and you show yourself like I'm a model and I have a nice body and it's like good but and you're like ah oh, I'm the freak from next door and then it's like yeah it's yeah. more difficult. <laughs> yeah. So 
So having a good attitude helps. Yeah, yeah you're really right about this. Um, but there's, there's another thing going there. If we think about cosplay as a type of modeling, and that's the idea that maybe some people are excluded from the hobby as well. Those who maybe have a bit too much weight or who don't look quite as good. So those who are maybe less uh, the models of our scene. Um, what would you say to them? Uh, I think it depends on what costumes they pick. Yeah. When you are like a person who is not super skinny, you maybe should not do any kind of bikini cosplay. Mm -hmm. Then you just maybe do like a kimono that has more fabric and you can show your skills by stitching something on the, on the kimono mm -hmm. and uh, make really beautiful wig and something like this. You have to see that um, your body, body is shaped in a nice way in your costume. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty important. Yeah. Well, I have some stuff to say about this because yeah. I'm not a model. <laughs> <laughs> I don't look like a model. So uh, I've always had troubles with picking cosplays and I always think of things that just fit my body and well people saying that uh, they're being judged or outcast from whatever community etc because they don't fit the pattern that's supposed to be perfect um, well it just goes two ways first of all I don't know, if, if you're not happy with how you look and you think the guys who are judging you are right, then do something about it. Go to the gym, lose some weight, I don't know, anything, if that makes you happy. It's all about feeling good with yourself in the end. And besides knowing what costume to pick, it's just if you really feel good in a costume, you should not care what the others say. It's all about yourself, it's not the others. This, this may sound selfish, but that's the truth. If you make cosplay or any other hobby, you make it for yourself. And if you make a costume that maybe you're not as perfect as the reference is, if you feel good with that costume on yourself, then do it. Fair point. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I completely agree uh, with Bella and Livia, uh, but it, I, I want to uh, express again that it's all a matter of picking a costume or a character that suits you as a personality and also has your personal interest. You're, if you cosplay something and you don't like the character very much, but you only like the design or yeah, you don't really know what kind of character it is, there is something missing in your costumes, I think personally, because if I have to make something and I don't really like the character or know the character, then I, I personally can't get myself to make it nice. Because I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, I like like this, yeah, it's okay. But if it's a character I really like and I adore and I'm a fan of, I really like to put it extra in it. Like just buy that little bit of uh, more expensive fabric or just put some more details on it. And uh, something I always uh, say is, um, just cosplay whatever you like because it's your money you spend on it. Cosplay is not a uh, very uh, not a very cheap hobby, I think. So just do something you like, and but also make sure that in the end, if you have finished it, that you feel okay in it. And that's the part where it uh, is important to choose something that fits you personally because uh, if you it, it works both way. If you are very slim and you try to cosplay a very voluptuous character or something then maybe you don't feel very nice in the end because you think yeah, I'm just not exactly like her so it's all about what you want and that you feel good in the end when you finish it so just uh, yeah, consider good what you choose to make before you start making it I think really good comment yeah, yeah. character first um anyone who has something to ask about looks and cosplay at this moment? No. Oh, oh, oh. <coughs> Come on, audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see you. With um, yeah. Any tips if you want to cosplay someone from the opposite gender? Yeah. Crossplay tips. Ooh, wait, did, uh, does anyone of you cos cosplay? I had some. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah. Okay. 
it's just rare that I do crossplay, but in general, it is super funny to be a guy or some guy. <laughs> to can like sit in a totally different way and act like in a totally different way. And the most important thing is that um, you um, have to put on the right makeup, and it's really hard to put on guy makeup. <laughs> People are used to it, and yeah, like okay. But I, I had so much troubles. I went like thousands of tutorials how to put on my makeup and in the end I just practiced it a lot and then at some point I, I started to like it but um, it is really a lot of fun and uh, yeah the thing is also that it's good when you take pictures that you have some friends who are with you and say like no do it more like this this still looks girly no no you're, no, you're looking weird <laughs> and you have to test it a bit but um, yeah I think it's, it's both fun like uh, cross playing as well as cosplaying <laughs> Um, I also have another tip, like um, how you stand, like post your posture key, uh, has a lot of importance because like women stand like this while guys stand like this. <laughs> I mean like um, your pelvis, your your, your butt bone <laughs> tilts like this. <laughs> so yeah, um, if you uh, study how guys stand and try to stand like them, it will be, it becomes like incredibly more believable. And also binding is very important and please try to bind with um, materials that are suitable for it, which are flexible, which help you breathe because it can get very uncomfortable very quickly. <laughs> that is a funny story. It was like my, one of my first conventions and we were at the um, train station and out of the corner we heard like a terrible scream. Like, oh my god, someone needs help. And we were running in the corner and then there was a girl who had duct tape around her chest. <gasps> And on the nipples, oh. and she tore it off. The nipples. So please put some kind of cloth on the nipples. Do <laughs> something that is like there's a special um, for sports a tape that doesn't stick so much to the, to the skin and it's lots nicer. <laughs> and also some some uh, girls do like um, binding tops, like really tight tops that they can wear under it and it's like lots more comfortable. <laughs> Don't use duct tape around your nipples. <laughs> uh, I'd like to add something to what uh, Ava said. It's not just standing, it's walking. Uh, if you're cross-playing a character that's manly, uh, you know, women walk like this, <laughs> like one leg in front of the other. But guys uh, spread their legs more, so they walk like this. <laughs> so uh, I don't know, watch videos of guys walking or just go stalk people on the street. <laughs> go stalk some guys and uh, see how they walk, so you can actually be in character when when you crossplay. <laughs> anything in particular you you were wondering about when you were no I just found some tips <laughs> cool nice go make it what are, what are you gonna make a uh, mat from death notes okay nice nice good choice um all right uh, any other looks questions yes yeah sure uh, the current wig I'm wearing is actually too small for my head I can't hide all my black hair on my back so is there any way to hide my hair so well, there is a bigger, bigger version of it. Can I? Can I? Yeah, yeah sure. Go ahead. Um, I have like waist length fluffy hair and. Can you can see, see it? Yes. Yeah, like, um, uh, you have to make. Uh, is your hair long? Uh, quite some. Yeah. Um, you have to make your hair in a very tight bun here, mm. in the back of your head. That's where wigs are elastic. Mm. So, yeah, if you yeah. make it very tight. Uh, you will be able to fit it under it and wear a big cap. Yeah. Also, sometimes there are uh, like um, pants for um, it's like for carnival makeup, you know. Yeah. And you can also put the, uh, on the on the hair. I always drawing my eyebrows with this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and you can like paint the hair a bit like in the color of the wig, like a bit reddish or something. So it looks like more it belongs to the wig if there's some tiny bit of hair that sticks out. Also, if you have like a lot of hair uh, in the back and uh, it just keeps on coming out if it's like maybe curly or I don't know whatever uh, it's good idea with the painting maybe before painting it you can spray some hairspray on it so it just stays there it doesn't go astray <laughs> does it help you? I hope this helps thank you very much uh, 
Um, sure. uh, yeah. I, I had a, uh, it's more of a comment. Well, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, it's about the gender. Uh, I yeah, cannot yeah, yeah. believe there's actually uh, like sexism in the cosplay world. Yeah. I think that's very weird because, let's say, I mean, yeah, let's say we're a geek or whatever, mm -hmm. but in my uh, relationship, the girls always know more. They always are more sharper and everything. So, and if a guy comes up to a girl and says, <laughs> because she thinks he's very sexy, it's more because they're so shy, they don't even know what to say when yeah. they see a, a beautiful girl walking. So I, don't, I, mm -hmm. I think it's maybe the other way around because the guys are less yeah. mature and less advanced than the girls are. So that's. Let's the bike. That's, that's a good song. <laughs> Lovely comment. Thank um, you for the comment. Yeah. So, but I mean, without girls, there's no cosplay. Yeah, it's true. True. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe no fan culture as well. <laughs> we, not yet. <laughs> um, okay, let's um, maybe proceed to the last topic, craft. Huh? What happened to the font here? Whatever. <laughs> um, so crafting, fun. Um, what we particularly wanted to discuss first, I think, is um, a few of you are actually working on cosplays of kind of semi-professional activities. You have web shops, you sell stuff. And I think, particularly you, I have a very triping scene. So how do you balance between this, this cosplay as a leisure activity thing and, and your uh, you know professional life? Well, uh, I do this all the time. I mean, I finish working on the commissions and then I work on my cosplays. It, it's kind of hard to keep them apart because sometimes I work on commissions in the same time with costumes. Um, I'm trying to somehow separate them, but it's, it's pretty difficult. Uh, what else can I say? It, it's hard because it's not like a job you go from eight to five. It's just when I have more work to do, I do more and when I don't, if I don't have commissions, I don't, then I always have to worry about money because it's not something constant. But I really love what I do, so I try to grow more and learn to do different things. So I'm, this way I get different types of commissions. And this is also like, this is your full-time job? Yeah. Wow, it's really, really good. I'm trying. Yeah, I know, it's really so nice. Thank you. Um, does any Anyone else of you, do you do commissions or do you have an Etsy or something you want to oh. <laughs> um, Like most cosplayers, I'm just doing it for a hobby. I'm doing it next to my normal job. Yeah. <laughs> I have like a full-time job and depending on how stressful my job is, I have more time for costumes or can do a big costume or can do a small costume. It's just um, yeah, when I have not much time, I'm doing school uniform. When I have a lot of time and some money, I can do a big costume. It's like don't put the pressure that you always have to be big, have to uh, make a big costume and you have no time. It's totally okay to do something small and later to do something bigger again. And um, yeah, I think it's, it's also important that um, you don't uh, use all your time on cosplay and be careful you also have enough time to, um, to rest because jobs are also really exhausting and school can be really exhausting and studies as well take also some time to rest because I, I'm i really a uh, real person. I always say like, oh, I have to work, work, work. And then at some point I'm just super exhausted and I just faint. And so I have, I have not some friends who say like, no, no, first sit on the couch, have your tea, and one hour you can start. <laughs> <laughs> and so I you have to find uh, the way also um, between the job and the studies and resting and cosplay is <laughs> a bit difficult sometimes, but at some point you're getting more clever uh, and, and finding your way through all this. Um, Sorry for a question regarding yeah. commissioning of uh, yeah. crafts. Because in my country, uh, commissioning used to be a very thriving business yeah. for the cosplayers. Mm -hmm. But over time, uh, there are always complaints that people say, your commissions are not as good as the cosplay that you do for yourself. Is this really? a problem that you get, uh, and how do you actually deal with it? Is this a question for me? Yeah. Um, I don't actually get this problem. I'm a perfectionist, and it's not necessarily a good thing <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> because I go crazy on making everything perfect. Um, 
but I understand what you're saying because some you know sometimes um, cosplayers work really really hard and put a lot a lot of time on their costumes that that's why they they get so good probably if someone asks you to make a commission uh, if you put the same amount of time in that commission the person who wants it could not afford it probably that's one of the reasons because it would take so long to make the same thing again and people would not aff afford it basically that that's why casual cosplays are simpler it's, it's not competition they don't have to be top-notch or perfect or exactly as the, the, the reference okay, we're aiming to that but maybe not the thing the idea is to make sure you talk to whoever is commissioning exactly how it's going to look in the end. To know what to expect, to know what they expect. To, because they say, you know, I have this amount of money. Do you think you can do it for this money or not? And I say, okay, I can use these materials, but maybe the results are not going to be that perfect because, well, the materials are, are cheaper and they're not that good. Or if you put more money into the materials, then you can get these results. I always, I always give them options. So actually they know what to choose from. I think it's the best way to get out of this problem. Our, um, to this topic, there's also a problem like, when you have a person who never sued any costume or made any armor, they have no idea how expensive this is. And then they're asking, for, also when I still like my old costumes, and uh, I know how much money is in them, and I, I never sell them so expensive. I usually just take the material costs plus a tiny bit more because people do not want to pay anything. I think everything is like super cheap. And I made uh, a kimono with three layers, and I had painted flowers on it, and it was a really big costume, and I wanted to sell it for 100 euro, which is like all the layers of costumes and the obi, and it's painted, and it wasn't that expensive. And then some girl wrote me, oh no, this is too expensive. Do you sell it for 30 euro? And I was like, 30 euro? Seriously? And it's a problem like when you have a customers who are like, I have no idea how expensive this stuff is. <laughs> yeah, so they also have to be, I have to get a feeling for how expensive the materials are, especially like in Europe. And they think, okay, in Europe there are also like different countries where stuff is cheaper and stuff is more expensive, but yeah, like in Asia it's like a lot more cheaper, or in Mexico it's also a lot more cheaper. Uh, but in Europe, it's like basically always expensive somehow. <laughs> Turkey is also very cheap compared to Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, well, uh, the opposite of what you say is sort of uh, valid for Turkey. Um, people are quite like uh, people don't want their reputation as commissioners damaged, and they are they would be also ashamed. You no, know, they would uh, it would hurt their pride to give their customers something worse than that they themselves would wear. So they take extra care, like, and we already have a few, so few cosplay uh, tailors, cosplay commissioners. So they take pr uh, quite good care of their uh, of what they're making. Sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to add that also have experiences that people were asking me, "Can you make me a costume?" And oh, okay, I'll look at it. And uh, then I'm like, oh, okay, uh, need some armor, need some fabric, need some. Uh, extra fabric and a uh, good wig and uh, well uh, how much money do you want to spend on it and then uh, yeah it, like you said well, well okay, is it okay if I give you uh, 50 euros was it then but I yeah only for the material cost uh, I, I would it, it is much more more expensive and um, so that's also a reason uh, I think people forget it often that don't cosplay they see people in costumes and uh, they often yeah, I, I, if it's not perfect, then people tend to criticize the cosplayer. And I think you have to respect it that somebody is making that and just enjoy it. And if you want to do it better, then do it yourself. And then you also see that it's a very expensive hobby. So yeah, please be nice to cosplayers because it's their own hobby and it's their money and they do their best. Yeah? Yes, I wanna, uh, because how, how, how many, what is the period do, you, do they, they ask you like a, a week before or a, a month before? Because maybe you guys can like tell them you can pay them in period. So because then they also don't have a lot of money. So let's say if they can pay like in, in two, three months. Uh, oh yeah. 
let's say 40 years per three months because we live monthly. Yeah, that would be a nice solution yeah. indeed. Yeah. Because. Uh, yeah. Th this one was indeed, uh, uh, I think, three months before the con. So it okay. would be, but it was uh, someone I, I, yeah, I don't know if I got a. It was just a she was going to school, so I don't think she would like to spend so much okay. money on a costume for a convention. So yeah. Also, once I sold a costume on raids, and the girl wanted to give me like 30 euro every month for five months, and then she just gave me 30 euro for the first month, and I sent her the costume that she can already wear it for the convention, and I never saw the rest of my money. No? no. <laughs> so sometimes happens. It was horrible, and then yeah, she of course deleted all her accounts, and I could never find her anymore. <laughs> oh shit. Wow. Couldn't you trace her based on the costume? Yes. Yeah. And she the never uh, took photos of it. Yeah, she ah. never saw anything. I just was it like cash or was it uh, like a bank? Yeah, no. She gave the money to me on the convention, and I gave oh. her the costume that oh. she can wear it. And then she never gave yeah. me the rest. Yeah. <laughs> that was That's horrible. Cool. That is cool. yeah. uh, something else. Most of the time, they realize they want a costume like really late yeah. <laughs> before the convention. Uh, before the Romanian conventions, I always get emails like one month, three weeks before, oh, can you please make me this? I'm like, oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Usually before the conventions, I'm like working like crazy because I already have commissions yeah. planned like three, four months before. And asking me like three weeks before, there's no way I can do that. Unless it's something really, really small and it takes me a few hours. Yes. That happens. <laughs> Are fun <laughs> sometimes. For me, it's fun because commissions are usually something I've never done before, and I always learn something. Yeah. So creatively interesting. Yeah, I get more experience even working on commissions. Cool. Um, I'm trying to get an eye on the time, but I didn't bring. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, I probably have a possibly painful question, but yeah. um, pose it anyway. Well, um, when you cosplay, you, you make a costume based upon something uh, other people have rights on, and how does that work? Is it like um, you avoid it until you are cut, or...? I, think, I don't think costumes... No, I don't think there are problems with that, because I think it's a, like a general known rule, cosplay. Cosplayers, let's be serious, they promote whatever yeah. character or something they're doing. So if there's any company that would not like it, it would be really strange because cosplayers are promoting them. Yeah. There, there is one case though, I think Fox uh, lately sued those people yes. who were making yes. Firefly hats, right? So yes. the minute things do go booming and fans make a lot of money on Etsy or whatever, with a specific hat or an adventure uh, time hat. Oh, yeah, yeah. different. Mm -hmm. Like ma making certain props yeah. and selling them, like many of them, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that can get That's you in corporate. trouble. Yeah. 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 That can get you in trouble. Um, also, uh, besides the uh, like advertor promotion angle, uh, the cosplayers usually never say, this is my design, this is whatever. They usually say the character's name and what uh, intellectual property it belongs to so that people can understand how accurate their costume is. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, but yeah, I also heard about this thing about Fox, and there are like something stirring in the United States about it now, and I'm sort of anxious. Yeah, yeah, it would be interesting to see if in a couple of years this does turn out to be an issue. Right now, we tend to think it's not, but maybe at some point. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe it will get commercialized like everything else. Yeah. I'm yeah. 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 <laughs> maybe before they get like the the single cosplayers, they would uh, more like attack the China shops or so. <laughs> <laughs> cosplay China shops are like everywhere and it's, I think they would try to get them first before us. <laughs> yeah. eBay's full of them. Yeah. Um, interesting, good question though. Um, I have a yeah. uh, last uh, yeah. thing I want to yes. yes. There was also about uh, the part of when, you know, like, let's say someone's less thicker or someone is thinner. I mean, um, uh, what I think is cosplay should be not only the cosplay because you can. You, I think you can put anything you want on. I I don't care, but I mean cosplay should be also about escaping because it's escaping in a fantasy. You know, we work all day, we do the real work, but you want to escape. So 
But I actually miss sometimes at these anime cons that you actually have a room that you can just also play your cosplay. You know, like be, yeah. let's say you have a Naruto costume, you can do like a jutsu or something, you know, really live your suit. Because then. I see Wendell and uh, anxious me. <laughs> yes. Well, I think it would be a nice idea, so you have everything for every kind of cosplayer. So you have to keep in mind that everyone cosplays for their own reasons. For me personally, yeah. I I don't really do the role-playing part, so only the costuming. Um, but it would be really nice if there indeed would be a special uh, feature on a convention where yes. people can uh, live it out that they yeah. all and make pictures on that way. But um, you you mentioned that cosplay is uh, also uh, escapism, right? Uh, or making a, a costume yes. that you work and then you can uh, work on your costume afterwards as a form of escapism. But uh, I think uh, that also depends on the cosplayer. For me personally, it's the same as every other creative hobby. Uh, that afterwards when I back from work that I just like to draw something or paint something. And in this case, I like to work on a costume, but, but that's not a form of escapism for me. But I think there, there are cosplays uh, that, that, that where escapism is a, can be a main factor or a more important factor in the cosplaying part. Uh, because what I was thinking, because normally if, let's say you're doing a, a, a job in an office mm -hmm. and you have to just do strictly, you know, what is meant or what is real. So mm -hmm. we have to sign in this paper, send these things, but let's say when we're defined as different because we look at all these anime, all these things, because we really enjoy the fantasy role. And that's yeah. what I mean. That's not really escaping, but just the fantasy part of life. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where we want to be. That's, these anime cons are so important maybe, for these. Maybe the same as uh, uh, computer games? Yes, like or computer games. games. Yes, something. exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's, I think it's the same for me, uh, yeah. cosplaying. Is that you, you set your mind to something different. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, nice. Nice comment, by the way. Yeah. Um, uh, I also have something to add. Uh, like, if, if you want to like live out a character, be like, uh, like act like them, be do what they do. Um, th there is this uh, thing called live action role playing, mm -hmm. and they can be about Loping. anything. So <laughs> yeah, try them maybe. <laughs> yeah, I know about laughing, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you mostly do? Uh, Anime cosplay, or do you also consider Western uh, comic books and other uh, media? <laughs> okay, I usually uh, cosplay in the series I really love, and these are uh, like all the animes and mangas are basically the stuff I watch all the time. There's a new anime season, oh, I watched this one and this one, oh, yeah, I can cosplay this one. <laughs> so uh, the thing is, um, of course, I really like the designs from the Western stuff a lot, but uh, I don't read much comics, so it's not so interesting for me. But it depends on what you're reading. Some people are reading a lot of books and they're cosplaying other book characters. So some people are, I have a friend who's like always watching all the uh, US TV series and just cosplaying like, like from, from this. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Oops, sorry. <laughs> uh, both. I started with anime cosplay, but then. Um, I choose my cosplay a lot depending on whether I like the character and whether I fit it and if I like the design or I find it challenging to make. So I find Western, not, not, not only like gaming, let's say anime is out. So everything else like games and uh, movies and uh, TV shows, I find the designs very, very interesting. Um, I haven't cosplayed from Western culture that much, but I would really like to do that more, actually. But I'm sticking to both because there's a beauty in each of them, from my point of view. So that's the thing. Well, I think it's all about what Belle also says. The one, it's about what what keeps you busy. What are you watching? Or what are you reading? And um, yeah, I also tend to watch a lot of anime and also play a lot of Japanese games. I don't really like uh, Western games. I don't know why, but just the whole uh, style and the way it's written, I really like it. Um, so I 
didn't really consider yet to do an, uh, a Western cosplay. But uh, if a friend asked me to join her in a cosplay, then I also uh, always like to join. So that can also be a reason for me to do a Western uh, cosplay. Um, you can also make uh, original designs. It's also a nice way. Uh, but that's not really cosplay, I think, yeah. or is it? But yeah, people tend to mix it up sometimes a bit. But um, for me, it is the same creativity and the same kind of hobby. Only one time you do because you really like a character, and the other time it's just because I like to make something and then put it on together, and then it's an original design. <laughs> it's really an easy way of cosplaying, I think. Um, okay. We're approaching the end of the panel, I think. It's a quarter to five, and we, um, well, we also have the big competition this afternoon. So if there, is there a last question from anyone? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> always a bad question to ask. I forgot it. Sorry. Raise your hand. <laughs> something, crossplay something, no. <laughs> No? Uh, uh, well, maybe yeah. let's think. Yes. Oh, wait, 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 there's someone behind you. I didn't oh, hear yes. yet, so yes. I want to hear. Why did you start cosplaying? Ah, Why? Interesting. <laughs> well, um, some friends of mine asked me to come to an anime convention, <laughs> like what's that? And, uh, well, sure, I will join because I uh, we were uh, studying Japanese uh, language and culture, so I was interested in it. Uh, and then I was there, and then like this is a completely different world with all kind of colorful people from all the animes and stuff I know and what is this this is this is awesome and then I started cosplaying because I want to cosplay together with my friends so that's the was the beginning of my cosplaying um, I really like clothes I really like wearing clothes shopping for clothes I really like um like lots <laughs> in fashion and I also like anything involving like pretending uh, fiction Anything like that's not real. That's that most ex escapism, as my friend over there said. So it just you know came together naturally one day. Yeah. That was of the most boring reason. I was in a convention, so I didn't try it. And it was fun, and I continued. And yeah, because I started to have like friends in the cosplay scene. And yeah, it's super boring, but that's my story. <laughs> Uh, I was in a manga anime group and some of them said, okay, so we're having our first convention in Romania, let's do cosplay. And I didn't even know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, cosplay? Really? Yeah, like you dress up and you're the characters that you like. Really? And my first reaction was, what is everybody else going to say? <laughs> but then we all decided, let's make a group from Bleach because <laughs> it was... Something back then. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and um, I said, oh, okay, let's choose our characters. And and I chose my character, it was Matsumoto. And I made the costume, and the rest didn't. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's so evil. <laughs> That's they didn't even go to the convention because it was another city. <laughs> so I just went there and I said, okay, I'm gonna try it. So I just went there. I changed and suddenly it was everybody around me and they were like, hmm, maybe this is going to work. <laughs> so that's how it started. Plus, I always liked to craft anything, like I was making jewelry, I don't know. I was even sewing bags when I was in high school, all sorts of small things. So it all came together perfectly. Nice. And with that, we perfectly end the panel. <laughs> Thank you for being here, um, all of you. It's been fun. Um, and thank you for um, attending the panel and asking such delightful questions. It's been fun. And um, go watch the cosplay competition. I think it's at 5.30, so you should still be able to enter it. Okay.